Our speaker today, Rosalind Wiseman, best-selling author, educator, and founder of Cultures of Dignity. Rosalind is the author of two New York Times bestsellers, including Queen Bees and Wannabes, the basis for the movie and the Broadway show Mean Girls. Her most recent works include books for parents on supporting their children through distance learning and curriculum guides to support social justice in middle school and high school. Social emotional learning is tough and it's a tough sell to sometimes to the students. And that is the reason that we have to go to the students in our communities to have them work with us and inform us uh, together in partnership to decide and figure out what it is that not only the content that we need, but more importantly, the context in which the students are operating. We wanna validate, don't relate. I'm gonna show you an example of that later, but what we, we often think in education, especially with parents, by the way, or with young people that we wanna to relate to them. Like we've gone through your experience, we know what it's like to be you. But all to say right now, actually, we don't know what it's like to be other people. That actually goes into the framework of DEI as well. We don't know what it's like to be other people. And so it's really important to say to people actually to reframe the relation, um, sometimes pr pursuit that we do, which is instead to say, you know what, I don't know what it's like to be you. But I, what I believe that you're going through and what I believe your experience is, is incredibly important. And I want to validate that. And so that principle can really reframe for people things in a really important way. We want to recognize that young people are subject matter experts of their lives. And so certainly, certainly, we do not know what it's like to be a young person going through a pandemic. We certainly do not what it's, we don't know what it's like to have grown up with no privacy and social media being able to you know, constantly um, target them to capture their attention and all of the complexities around that. We don't know what it's like. So we need to recognize that they really are the subject matter experts of their lives. If I'm, which I am, a white Jewish teacher, female, and I'm talking to a young black man, am I gonna say, I know what it was like, I was your age once too, it gets better? No, I'm not. That is disrespectful to his life experience. It is imperative that I say to him, you know what? I was young, I was a teenager once, but I don't know what it's like to be you. I really don't. And so I need to listen to you first and really hear what you, you know, hear your experiences, hear what you feel comfortable telling me so that then I will, and only then will I be able to be, may have the possibility of helping you and guiding you. Is that um, respect in Latin means to look back at and to admire somebody for their actions, for how they have behaved. The word dignity is to be worthy. It means that you just inherently have it and that dignity is a given. And so respect is tied to actions and how you have conducted yourself. And dignity is just something that you get, it is inherent. And the complexity of our world is that sometimes people in positions of authority take away or try to take away the dignity of other people. And they use the position of respect that they have. They use the position of authority, the respect that that position gives them, the authority that that position gives them to get away with taking away this, to, get a, to take away the dignity of others. And young people know this. How does this person influence your work with young people? And I'm gonna give you a little, a little caveat because I saw it in the chat, which is that somebody wrote, a couple of people wrote, some of my, my teachers and then put in parentheses, some of them. So some of the people that we, that we um, were taught by, did not, we did not respect. And so I want you to think about, well, maybe how did that influence why you are teaching or how you are teaching today? My father said young people need love, respect, understanding, collaboration, and hard work. These are the elements of dignity that actually Donna Hicks um, has written about. And that, we, that really dignity for me um, and I've spent years thinking about dignity in so many different ways with so many different people and thought leaders, um, is that it really comes down to acknowledgement, acknowledgement of one's experience, acknowledgement that it's important. Um, there's a number in here of saying, I wanted to do it opposite of the teachers that I had that humiliated me when I was young. So these are powerful lessons. Emotions are real, they are real, but they are not permanent. You can change the way you feel. And this goes right to the heart of being able to say to a young person, your emotions and how you feel about something are completely legit. No one has the right to question you about the way you feel. 
and your, your feelings about that. Emotional intelligence, when we do this for all of us, no matter how old we are, goes up and anxiety goes down. And that is when it's something that they can apply to their lives and they can say, oh, this is actually, this is, there is a reason that I am doing all of this stuff. Instead of frankly, just thinking about like, let's be nice to each other. I can just, just take a moment. You have a teacher who doesn't know anything about you, who comes into a class and says, now we're going to talk to you. Now we're going to teach you about goal setting, but they haven't asked you about what your passions are, what your purpose is, or about you know, what, what, how does this goal setting fit into your life? How does it make sense to you? SEL isn't one thing. It's not one curriculum. Um, it's all of it. And I'm going to miss something sometimes, and then I'm going to try again tomorrow. And so I think what, what I take away from Mr. Roberts's um, quote is that you're, you're not off the hook. We're, no one's off the hook here about teaching social emotional learning isn't one thing. And we're going to make mistakes and we're going to keep doing it. Um, because it's about why we actually are in school. It is about, literally it is about, this is not what he said, but it is about the foundation of why we are in school. And so if we can level set on that and say, this is what we believe and therefore our behavior has to be an extension of that, then I think we get to a place where, where teachers who are stuck feel that this is what it means to be a part of this community. And so it, and this is what it means to be a part of this community. And so this is what we're doing. And yet there's also a place to make mistakes.